Hello there, welcome to Lockdown Electronics uh, with me, Bill. A uh, little bit of background first of all. I've um, been into electronics well since I was a teenager really, so the best part of 50 years, and I've always dabbled and always wished I'd learned a bit more. Sometimes I wished I'd maybe made a career of it, but uh, never did. Uh, took my um, amateur radio license back in the mid 80s and I've dabbled with, with radio and electronics pretty much consistently ever since. So along came the lockdown and there's an opportunity there for me to make a real effort and try and uh, learn a bit more and that's what I've been trying to do. So there's still a very long way to go but uh, I've been uh, restoring a few uh, things that I've got off uh, eBay and one or two other places and uh, now I've taken on something a bit more challenging. Um, it's all thanks to uh, Mr. Carlson and he's a very um, worthwhile to watch YouTube channel, Mr. Carlson's Lab. I'll put some links down uh, down there and you can uh, uh, go and have a look for yourselves but there's some very good YouTube channels. Um, his restorations are absolutely phenomenal and they're very educational as well. So I've taken something on so uh, let's um, let's get to it and see uh, see how I get on. Okay so on the bench this afternoon we've got an um, interesting piece of uh, equipment. This is a Taylor uh, number 65B signal generator. Um, I guess from what I've been able to find out on the internet, uh, this is probably circa about 1943, 45-ish, something like that. So at least at least 75 years old. Um, and I picked this off up off eBay. It's um, not in not in perfect condition by a long means, but. Uh, it's certainly certainly restorable. There's a couple of um, cracks in the glass here, which um, is easily sortable by uh, either replacing it with some some plexiglass or getting another piece of glass cut. But uh, the mechanism mechanism itself um, working very smoothly. One or two knobs missing, but again, not difficult to um, to replace these. Um, but this was a, a signal generator that would produce uh, RF, and as you can see, we've got kilocycles and megacycles, these days of course better known as kilohertz and, meg and megahertz and this was um, a number of wave bands uh, so this is the wave band selector here uh, this is the RF output and then uh, it's also possible to have simply uh, the RF signal, it's possible to modulate it with 400 hertz um, signal generated internally or it's also possible to feed in uh, through that socket there, uh, a modulation of your of your choice, and the RF output is here. Um, so it's a fascinating piece of kit. Pretty convinced this is the uh, original mains lead, as you can see. It has a, a fabric outer coating, and the internal wires are of course um, insulated with rubber, which is now simply falling to pieces. Um, so I don't think it would be terribly wise to to pop a mains plug on this and um, and put uh, put uh, it to the test. I think that might be quite a bad idea. But let me show you um, uh, inside. It's uh, quite interesting, and um, I think it's not been. Um, I don't think it's been tampered with since it was made. And um, actually, think hopefully it'll make a nice restoration project. Okay, so here we are in the back of the uh, the Taylor. 65B um, RF signal generator and uh, as you can see um, vacuum tubes not surprisingly as it's uh, 75 years old um, it's three tubes uh, two triodes here and this is a full wave rectifier tube um, obviously I haven't tried this yet but uh, the getter on these tubes looks to be uh, in reasonably good condition and if you look closely, I don't know how well the camera is picking that up I was moving a little bit there, you can perhaps see beautiful hand-tied restraints for the valves and also for the, for the cabling so it's very nicely done um, the other thing to note down here is the mains lead comes in uh, it's attached to this tag strip here and then it toddles off up to this switch here which is the, the main uh, on-off switch um, and I'm sure you've probably spotted by now that uh, there's simply a live and a neutral uh, there's no earth in this cable and so although this is a metal case and actual fact the box that surrounds it's also metal um, there's no uh, no actual earthing so uh, 
prime candidate for a new mains lead and obviously we're going to make sure that the chassis is, is grounded this time. Um, but it's nicely done. Um, under this can here is a uh, filtering for the mains and that, that's to keep the RF signals off the mains um, but there's uh, two two coils in there and four capacitors forming a, a, a filter um, and then the RF oscillator which is this triode here uh, actually the coils and the capacitor are contained in that box there so that's completely shielded from the rest of the unit and the valve sits straight on top of it the associated trimmers and coils for the for the various bands are just there and obviously you've got the, the variable capacitor here for uh, for tuning. Uh, this triode is the triode that produces the 400 Hz internal oscillation for modulating the carrier and this is the the full wave rectifier so we've got main tra mains transformer there and then uh, here that's uh, the modulation transformer that's used to transfer 400 Hz onto the carrier if that's what you've got selected and you can see as I'm sure here we've got uh, some wax capacitors which I'm sure are uh, well past their sell by date and we've also got two capacitors here which are also going to need replacing they're full microfarad at 250 volts they look uh, like electrolytics I'm sure they are electrolytics although they're actually called uh, the doubleter electric capacitor or something like that forgive my pronunciation but they're going to need to get replaced and if you look closely again I don't know how well the camera's picking that up but on those little bits of wire that lead from the end of the capacitor onto the, the, the tag strip uh, you can see there's some green sort of powdery green corrosion which would suggest that's copper that's been corroded and I suspect the contents of the electrolyte in these capacitors has been the the culprit in uh, producing that green colour so again going to get those um, replaced. I have quickly popped my uh, curve tracer on here and they were actually showing um, showing a credible um, shape for electro electrolytic capacitor but of course uh, there's no question at all that after 70 odd years they're not going to be in good shape as are these, as are these uh, wax and paper ones. Um, otherwise uh, apart from a rather dark looking resistor there which is obviously going to need to be replaced uh, most of it looks um, looks pretty good uh, so hopefully it's going to um, going to form uh, quite a nice uh, restoration uh, project and as I said the uh, getter on the valves this uh, silvery substance uh, is still white uh, sorry is still silver and not white so hopefully uh, that that's going to bode well for for three useful uh, uh, vacuum tubes but uh, we'll just um, have to see how we go so uh, wish me luck and uh, we'll see how we get on